Welcome coaches, welcome in. We're gonna give coaches just another minute or two to keep coming on in. Hello coaches, welcome. We're gonna give some other coaches one more minute or so to jump on in. All right, we'll give it one more minute and we'll get started. Thank you guys for coming in tonight. We're so excited to be here. Awesome. Well, welcome, coaches. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm excited to bring to you two guest speakers tonight. Um, my name is Sean Howe, and I'll be the moderator. I work for Glacier Clinics as the account manager, and we will have two guest speakers tonight. Um, I'll go over a quick introduction, and then we'll just get started. All right, so our first speaker tonight, or I'll go over the agenda first. I'm sorry. Um, so the agenda tonight is we're going to dive into the four learning styles of athletes. We're going to learn how D1 schools use various technologies to teach. We're going to discover how Team Nation's gamified learning solutions can help simplify lesson plans and propel athletes, uh, their learning. And then we're going to uh, be able to ask Chad all of our burning questions on what it's like to learn schemes from a player's perspective, um, which brings us to our next step on who the guest speaker is. So our first guest speaker is going to be Chad Lewis. Um, thank you so much for coming tonight. He is a three-time Pro Bowl tight end for the Philadelphia Eagles and St. Louis Rams. Uh, he went to college at BYU and played tight end there. Um, he is an author, motivational speaker, and associate, associate athletic director at BYU. At BYU. Um, and he obviously has such a passion for football and learning and education. Uh, and then our second guest speaker tonight is going to be Ryan Dance. He's director of sales at Team Nation Sports. Um, he's a divisional athlete, tech enthusiast, and former area president of instruction. He provides knowledgeable consultation to football coaches athletic directors and educators. Um, and he has led high caliber sales in educators, instructions and customer service teams uh, for a lot of different tech firms. So, and then finally myself, um, you guys all know me, I'm Sean with Glazier. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys both for being here today. And Chad, the floor is yours. Absolutely, we'll get started here. So Chad, obviously, you know, you've been, you've been through the rounds as, as the coaches know, they've definitely, definitely seen at every level. So one of the things that, that many of you know, is that Chad walked on. So love to hear a little bit about kind of the process there and what that experience was like. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Ryan. And Sean, thank you so much for moderating for us. And this is really good to be with you coaches and look forward to answering your questions. I was a walk-on at BYU. Um, I was a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Taiwan for two years before I played football in college. Not, not really the greatest training ground or preparation. <laughs> you know, eating rice all day, riding a bike, and sweating my butt off for two years was not really the best thing for college football. But I learned a lot, and when I came home, I had a burning desire to play football. I had plenty of friends on the team. My brother played at the University of Utah and I, my friends really encouraged me to go talk to the coaches and walk on. And luckily for me, everything worked. I played well, I made plays. And as a freshman, I was needed, pressed into action. And I played four years at BYU and then I played nine years in the NFL and had plenty of ups and downs in between. And the reason that's important uh, is because football is the ultimate walk-on sport, meaning you have to have, and you coaches know this, you have to have a desire to play. It can't come from your parents. If that's the only motivation or, you know, that you're getting is from your parents, football just doesn't work. You got to play another sport. Go do, go do something else. <laughs> football, it doesn't matter your size it really matters how much you want it. And so I'm coming to you from a really a, a position of experience, a position of trust, a position of I've, I've been there, I've done it. I know what you coaches are trying to get out of your players. And so that's, that's my background. Walk on that once I got into the pros and things went well, 
I made it to the Pro Bowl three times. And that means a lot to me because I was able to play with and against the very best at that level. And that all came from just a burning desire to play football, a burning desire to make plays. Well, I want to share football with the kids of America in a way that helps them chase their dreams, express themselves on the football field, make plays, uh, hopefully make friends at school, also get scholarships in college, move on throughout their lives with football as a foundation for hopefully success. And that's why I'm here. And it was it was kind of interesting reading reading up on your background. I know you had some really demanding coaches. Um, what was the difference between Lavelle and then you had was it Reed that you had? Yeah, in Coach a, Reed. Yeah. So what were the differences between Lavelle and Reed? What did they expect out of you? Great question. Lavelle Edwards, legendary BYU coach. The stadium here is named after him. And Andy Reed, one of Lavelle's proteges. He was a he was a graduate assistant at BYU before he went into college, and then. Mike Holmgren asked him to work with the Green Bay Packers. Then he was made Eagles head coach. And now he's the Kansas City Chiefs head coach. Those two guys fundamentally and foundationally are, are very similar. They both love football and they both love people. And one place that Lavelle shined was he focused on people. Football to him was all about people, his staff, his players, his connections with fans, um, he just didn't let things bother him. He focused on those relationships and made sure those worked. He had incredible assistant coaches. Norm Chow was one of those who for years, you know, went to a lot of different places. USC was an incredible assistant coach and offensive mind. Andy Reid is unique because of his unbelievable depth of knowledge of every position in the game of football. <laughs> so once he got into college, he dove in to the game. And so he, he was made head coach after being the quarterbacks coach at Green Bay. And he was able to make that transition because of his extreme knowledge at every position. And so when he's coaching a practice, he'll sometimes say, thing about, say something about each position. He knows it in depth. He knows it intuitively. He just feels it. Um, his knowledge of the game, I would say, is second to none. Like, even now, he's 60, 61 years old. He's still one of the most creative guys <laughs> in pro football. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love, I love that you say that. One of, the, one of the things that we always talk about is the, the learner get cut, right? Especially as you, as you were in the walk-on status and you were then promoted. What were some of the ways that you used to learn Lavelle's playbook, which I know was pretty demanding as well? You know, what was interesting about BYU's playbook, it was in our heads. So originally, <laughs> when Doug Scoville put in the offense years ago, it was on paper. By the time I got to BYU, Norm Chow just made, made it was just in our heads. So we would go over stuff on the, on the blackboard. We would watch a lot of tape. But the learning was on the field, experiential learning. And if I wanted to learn how to run an option route, he would say, okay, we're going to run Y choice or we're going to run Y option. I had to get with the receivers and say, teach me how to run a, an option <laughs> route. Teach me how to set up that linebacker or that strong safety. And then it was hardwired here. Yeah. So it wasn't on paper. And as a team, we taught each other, you know, obviously with the coaches, they were – they were very intense and great instructional teachers, but it was us players that were all the time talking and teaching. And, you know, the, the saying, when you teach a principal, you learn it more yourself. That's true. Like mm -hmm. that, that was how I learned to be what you. That's awesome. Yeah. It's always, it's always fun to hear that. We love to hear from kind of some of the chat or different people that are on, um, you know, who else has, has players that actually, you ask the players to teach and go ahead and raise your hands or put it into the chat. We'd love to read it as we move on to the next field here. But once you put those in, we'll discuss those. It's really one of the best ways that upperclassmen can teach the game to the younger guys, because most of the time us football players, we're, we're, we fake it till we make it. Our coaches ask us if we know what we're talking about. We're like, yeah, I know what we're doing. But most of the time we don't. 
And so to ask a player to teach a younger player, you're driving the game home for that kid. He will never, ever forget it. And that's, that's such a valuable and lost. Because of the speed of practice, it's a lost art. Got to take the time to have them teach. I, I love that. You, you mentioned one of the greatest teaching styles is asking the learner to actually teach. Um, what were some of the things that your, your Eagles teammates did to kind of quiz each other or learn it together? If you didn't know it, you were going home. <laughs> so the motivation was um, at an all-time high. Yeah. You didn't want to go in practice, and you especially didn't want to go into a game without knowing your stuff. Yeah. And so when I was going into the pros, I had a, a tight end from the Jets tell me, look, you just got to know your crap, man. That's the number one, one, number one way to have success. <laughs> so how do you know your stuff? We would talk all the time. And when you're a pro, you have time. Yeah. High school, you have a lot more, you have classes, you have dating, you have all sorts of stuff. College, you also have classes. When you're a pro, you got a lot of time to talk football. And we would, we had a culture in Philadelphia Eagles where we were talking football a lot. Mm -hmm. We also talk families and everything else, but we were freely able to ask each other questions about the game. Mm -hmm. That's something that, you create that culture on your team. That's a winning culture. Yeah. One of the, one of the coolest things that I heard was how, how Homo described it from. So uh, Tom Homo played with the 49ers for, for many years there, coached at Cal. He talked about the principle of, of talking about it. Like Chad was mentioning chalking, which is, you know, up on the whiteboard, the drawing it out, then walking through it, like the visualization, and then actually doing the, the running it, the blocking yeah. of it. And so when we talk about those different methods, we'll dive deep into the research that's around those. Um, but we'd love to hear what you guys are doing. So in terms of in terms of who's doing the talk it, chalk it, the walk it, block it, who does a few of those styles? Go ahead and put those in the chat. And then in terms of what we talk about when we think about how kids are actually learning or how coaches are actually instructing, it's always interesting to hear the stats around these. So the visual part, obviously many of you know that, that's the actual diagramming it, putting it up on the board, seeing pictures, writing it. How much studying did you guys do with the Eagles? I, Chad's got a binder that he's, he's got here sitting next to me. This is one, this is one game, Philadelphia Eagles um, versus the St. Louis Rams in the NFC Championship game, January 27, 2002. So this was one game. And we would have, you know, all of our, all the scouting report. And then our plays, um, like these are our nickel pass plays. We just memorized the plays. And then you ran them on the field so many times that you knew them. But that, that's how for years, college football, we got a three-ring binder. We got the plays. And you just had to memorize them, highlight them, um, listen to the coach, share some coaching points. But like we're going to talk about right now, there's there's four different ways to learn. And every one of us players learns really in kind of a multitude of, of ways. Some of them just one way. They're just visual. They can be world beaters by just studying the what's written, you know, yeah. the three ring binder. Yeah. But what about the kids that don't learn that way? Yeah. And that's that's something that you mentioned when we when uh, Will Tukuafu was was here visiting. He's one of those players that every time you see him going to explain a movement, you always see his his body move. Right. Yeah. He he talks about the first step. That's that kinesthetic style of learning or the learning through doing. So the nice thing about using all of your senses is that there's a lot of body science behind it, where your feet are, where your hands are, but also things like the smells of the field, right? Putting on cleats or when it's wet and feeling that, knowing where you're at with the lines, seeing the first down marker. There's a lot of people that learn that way. And I remember you mentioning <laughs> the difference between looking back in between the mic and the, the, the end and your window is so small. Yeah. You're looking through bodies. Yeah. Every time I'm walking to the line of scrimmage, I have the defensive and linebacker, strong safety. Those are my three guys that I'm studying, or the middle linebacker. Um, 
And the windows, once you're in your stance, they're, they're really small and they're tiny. You got to get used to feeling where people are, knowing where they are based on your study, and then a lot of repetition. Yeah. The nice thing is that all of you coaches are already doing this kinesthetic type of learning because you're out there on the field. You've got the time with the kids. And when they're at practice, they're with you. Now, there's a lot of other things you can't control, like what's happening at home, what's happening in class. And the nice thing is you can at least eliminate some of the distractions, but you never know what the kids are going through. So as we talk about other types of learning, that visual piece, Chad in his binder, he's literally got highlights and lines that he's drawn and he's redrawn them and he's written them out. So that's talking about that visual type and setting those brain synapses to make sure that he remembers. Now, as we move on to the next, it also brings up the reading and the writing. So as we look back at this binder, you, you literally highlighted your lines on there. Tell us yeah. about that. I would highlight my lines on my plays, but then I would also put in any coaching points. So as we're going through install with our coaches, I'm listening, I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking at Donovan McNabb, the quarterback, and I'm, the coaches are saying, okay, on this play, I want you to come in short motion. Your, your point is 10 yards over the ball. And I'm looking at Donovan like, okay, that's good. Sometimes he's like, I want you to cut that down on this play. I want you to be at about eight. And if it's eight, the only one I care about in the room is my quarterback saying, I want you at eight. Yeah. So even though Andy's saying, you got to get it 10 yards, Donovan's saying, on this play, in this situation, I want eight. Because I know you're either going to get the first or whatever. I got it. Oh, um, yeah. So I put that down. And reading, writing, questions, notes in my own words. That was a different style of learning that everyone has to incorporate. Oh, yeah. And it, some kids, that's not their strong suit. It, it, it's not. There are some kids that, as you guys know, they struggle in reading. They struggle in writing. There are some kids that are even struggling to put their own grades to the minimum. Whatever your guys' minimum is, a 2.5, a 2.0, a, a, 2 a 3.0. There are a lot of kids that their weakest areas are in the reading and the writing side. So that's why we also need to incorporate the auditory, what we say as a coach, how we lecture, what it sounds like. But there's also a lot of sounds that you had to learn, um, especially with crowd noise. So what would you guys do for, for crowd noise and how that happened in practice? Crowd noise, we would, like if we we're playing the Cowboys or the Vikings, it was going to be in a dome and very loud. We would have speakers, which most people do now, most colleges uh, right on the field, just blasting crowd noise and music. <laughs> so you couldn't hear a practice. Every time you run an offensive plays, all you hear is madness. And we had to get used to hand signals. So we didn't be able to call every one of our plays with hand signals. And then I'm never hearing the snap. So I'm one person removed from the tackle just far enough that even if it's kind of loud, I can't hear my quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> so out of the corner of my eye, I have to be able to just feel when that snap is going and my get off time has to be good. If I'm delayed out there, that's not good either. And if I'm just looking at the ball, I'm going to get cracked by the defensive end or <laughs> outside linebacker. So auditory, visual, sense, like all, all that was super important to my position yeah. where I was on the field. And there's, there's a lot of kids that they'll learn in a different style. So the crazy thing is you might be very good at learning from the, the doing of the aspect, the kinesthetic part or the reading or the writing. There's some kids that are so book smart, but oftentimes it's really hard to notice those players. So that was one of the things that I wanted to ask you about in the pros. You guys had tons of staff, but back in your high school days, how many assistant coaches did you have to play with? We had enough assistant coaches to run a team, but not enough to like fully function. <laughs> and all the guys that were doing it, they were uh, probably like most of you. I mean, you're, you're working your butt off several hours a week. Your wife is wondering, are you ever going to get home? And you're making a dollar fifty an hour. Right, right. And you do it because you love the game. And you want to see this taken to this generation because of what you can learn from the game. Mm -hmm. and. I wish high school players, coaches were paid more. I wish it was more attractive for people to get in there. But since it's 
you guys are the rare people that are willing to take this job on and coach a really tough game. And the pressures of football can make it so if you're not careful, you're not sharing the love of the game. You're just sharing the game and you become so hard that the kids you're coaching right now can't hear you. They can't feel you. Um, you're a little bit scary to them. It's, it's fine to be scary at times, but don't get lost in your coaching and the pressure that you can't still share the love of the game with these guys. Because when you do that, that's when they want to run through brick walls for you. That's when it, it all works. And um, so keep, keep doing what you're doing. Oh, I love that. I know, I know that when we, when we talk about this, these different types of learning, like what actually happens, there's a lot of science that goes into it. So it, it's pretty easy research from Cisco. Basically, when you coaches deliver one, two or more methods, the kinesthetic, the visual, the auditory, the walk it, the chalk it, talk it, the block it. The crazy thing is that kids, their basic skill set, if they're just using one, will go up 9%, right? And that's the actual recognition, that's the learning, and that's the memory recall. But if you start to add multiple styles, those basic skills go up 22%. We're talking about a game of football. Uh, there's, there's, some players that you you refer to as your only skill players, right? Your high order skills. Cisco's best research was, look, I can actually take these high order skills and improve learning and retention up by 32% with Cisco's research when you use this multimodal or multiple ways of teaching. Now, it looks like we've got one of the coaches that said, considering teaching my freshman kids now with video simulators like Go Army, because they're so stuck with learning football on Madden and not walking through on paper. Not only is that an amazing point, but you'll also see kids that will simulate the touchdown celebrations, the movement, the chalky like arm blocking <laughs> of it. And it's in the actual skill that you'll see this kid is a Madden kid only, right? Or this kid only played NCAA 99 back in the day, especially with the spin moves that I've seen kids try to, try, <laughs> like the right trigger stick. A great comment by, uh, by that coach there. So it's, it's hilarious as we see these different types of things and we think about the legendary coaches of our day. We think about Lavelle, we think about Andy Reid. What were some of the things that they delivered to make sure that you had all these ways? Well, that's a good question. Um, Andy Reid would always say, I want you to suck the brains out of your assistant coaches. So if it's your tight ends coach or your offensive coordinator or wide receiver coach, it doesn't matter. Get with your coaches. And then he tasked his coaches, knowing we're in the pros, we've got plenty of time. They'll stay here until midnight. They'll stay here past midnight to help you get it right. So whatever it takes on paper, listening, watching more tape, going outside and doing a walkthrough just with your coach, their, their hearts are in it. They will do whatever it takes for you to get it. And that was, that was extremely helpful at the pro level to have a coach that was, I knew they were willing to go to the ends of the earth to help me get ready for that game. Mm -hmm. Pat Shermer was my tight ends coach for a while. He's been a head coach a few times in the NFL. He was amazing at just slowing everything down watching tape slow enough that I got it. Mm -hmm. Juan Castillo, my tight ends coach before him, and Tom Melvin after him. Those, those three guys were amazing coaches because watching tape wasn't just watching tape. We were watching tape to beat the New Orleans Saints yeah. or the New York Giants. And so they would stop and say, they would point out what the defense was doing and help yeah, me. The auditory side. Yeah, help me get ready to you know, put a fake on just the right person in just the right way on the specific play that was going to help me score a touchdown. Hey, you guys probably noticed his kinesthetic means sticking in there, right? He's already doing the fake. In the <laughs> That's right. right. That's how my body works. That's <laughs> most, most football players work like that. Now, also to point out, as you're talking your players through the film, they would stop it. They would pause it. Then they would talk about it, right? The verbal. They would then help them visualize it, right? The understanding that that's moving on. So now one of the things that you guys know 
is that a lot of kids have all these different types of learning potential, but oftentimes we actually don't know how they're receiving it. We don't know what they're actually learning. How do you track it? How do you track What's it? What's the metric? <laughs> now, are they just playing Madden or are they <laughs> getting better? Absolutely. I, I, have a, I, I have to admit to all of you, I would never go first in practice because I didn't know any of the plays. I knew the X and I kind of knew the Z and I kind of knew the slot. And so if we ever had a skill I had to run in front of the coach, I would always go second because I was terrified. I didn't know what it was. And I'd look at the quarterback and be like, hey, what am I doing right as we're running out? There's nothing worse than a player in high school to get up there and not know what you're doing. You don't want to get yelled at. You don't want your peers to make fun of you. Well, you don't, you don't want that at any level. Right. So how sweet would it have been if you could have had extreme confidence that you know exactly what the play required of you? You might not have been able to deliver it, or I might not have been able to deliver but I could at least walk into that huddle and know exactly what the coaches wanted from me. The yeah. distance, the angles, the yardage. <laughs> oh, there, nothing breeds confidence like knowing exactly what to do. So one of the things that, that we wanted to share with you is some of the ways that BYU has done this. As you guys know, they've been a high level program for a lot of years. But one of the things that they've also done is they've implemented tools and helps for all these kids knowing those learning styles. So. Chad, can you walk us through what the coaches have done over there at BYU? Now, we're not going to share all of their all of their secrets, but we'll definitely go over some. What are this some is, of those? This is a list of everything they're trying to use. They're, they're, they will, most coaches will stop at nothing. If there's a technology out there, they're going to grab it. And if it's sticky to them, they're going to use it and keep it. If it doesn't work or it takes too much time, it's out. <laughs> so this is just a small list of some of the things that the BYU coaches are using to help the team learn their stuff, remember their stuff, enhance their stuff, prepare um, for games. And after, after practices, and after games, how to critique yourself the right way and how to study. So, yeah, it's, it's awesome that there's so many like this. I, I can tell there's a lot of coaches that I've talked to out there who use the Google classrooms, right? They'll use the chalk talk or board time. Some of you even have uh, the ability to go there. Now, Sean, will you go ahead and run a poll for us now? Sure. So we'll, we'll go ahead and have everyone answer these questions. But uh, essentially, we're talking about the ones learning their stuff, right? So in, in terms of this, how many starting players did you guys lose this past season to injury? Now, we'll have everyone answer that. We'll, we'll give you some time to do that. But go ahead and click those. We'll have those run on there. And then... Who actually utilizes this D1 level type of instruction and actually administers tests or tries to understand what the players know? And we'll go ahead and answer those questions. We'll give you about a minute to answer those. Now, I, I know some of your coaches had, had tests for you guys. What, were they written? Were they oral? What did you guys have to do? They were always, they were always written and we take them on Saturday night. And if we were traveling, we would get it done before the special teams meeting at about seven o'clock that night. And then team meeting was, you know, seven 30 and we'd go until uh, probably nine o'clock or something like that each Saturday night. <laughs> but it was a written test. We go through our plays. Um, for me, I like more than anything, just to go over with my, my coach, ask me questions. And then I'd sit with Donovan McNabb, make sure I had exactly what we needed together. We were on the same page. I would sit with him on Wednesday nights and, the, and our center, and we'd watch every blitz from the opposing team. So I had the blitzes. I knew his checks. I knew what he was thinking. I knew what he was going to check to before he checked to it. I was very comfortable with, with where he was thinking and where we were going. And so it was just it, it was study from every angle. Oh, man. It, it's intense that you guys have that because you mentioned uh, that your game against USC, you guys were literally limping out on the field. How many starters did you guys lose this year? We probably lost over 12 starters uh, during the year. <laughs> oh. That's offensive linemen, receivers, quarterback, um, running back, defensive line linebackers, safeties, corners. Oh man. Every, every position was hit. And that is not atypical. So yeah. teams have to get used to 
preparing their second and third guys to go on the field <laughs> and win games. So oh, how man. do you do that? What's the best way to do, do that? Absolutely. That's, that's what we're we'll talking about. So we uh, looking from the results, it looks like at least everyone lost somebody um, four to seven players was the highest results. And then some of you lost eight to 12. I can't even imagine what that looks like because here's the thing. When we talk about, you know, the ones, the who's studying, who's running it, who's actually getting the repetitions at practice, to be honest, the twos, the threes, those are the guys that aren't getting those repetitions. So you would like them to get mental reps when they watch practice. Yeah. <laughs> and you can, you can give mental reps. But, but it, it just it's insufficient. It, it makes you nervous as a coach when your guy gets hurt and you're like, all right, next one up. You hope that they're ready. You hope that they're prepared. So guys, I, I prepped probably the worst zinger in the world for, for Chad. So as many of you know, he got hurt in the title game in the NFC, uh, catching the winning touchdown. And your replacement, Jeff Thomason, was hired for the Super Bowl on a one game contract as what the number five or number six tight end on your roster? Well, he was now the number two once I went down, like he was, he was in it. So here, how would you like that to go from construction company building homes to the Super Bowl? And in that year, 2005, February, he was on good morning America. Um, every, every morning, every news outlet, because it was such a crazy story. He was yeah. going from construction worker to the Super Bowl. And, you know, and unfortunately, as, as many of you know, he wasn't targeted and they asked him to just go stand in there and block. And he ripped it. He did a great job. Yeah. And he could have he could have made some catches if they would have put him in the pass game, too. But, you know, with such limited time to get ready for such an important game, they said L.J. Smith's going to be our primary receiving tight end. Uh, Jeff, here's the plays that you need to have ready. But if, if L.J. got hurt. He was our tight end. <laughs> oh, man. So there you go. I mean, in the Super Bowl, how can you prepare, even if you're a pro coach, how can you prepare a guy to get ready for the Super Bowl that fast? Man, that's that's where we get to talk about Team Nation. So so with us, it's it's the ability to understand what your players actually know. It's getting a player like Thomason ready for the Super that's Bowl right. or ready for Northridge or East Lake in game four. One of a, a coach just barely told me that his starting QB that he's worked with for seven plus years because he coached him in Pop Warner, he went down, broke his ankle, and then his number two got a concussion. So now he's going with number three who hasn't taken a single varsity snap because he's had that one. He's always played in JV and he had no idea if he was ready or not. So common. So this happens to everyone, you know, like the poll questions, how many of you lost starters? What we need to start doing, though, is teaching with gamification. And what that means is allow kids to learn in the way that they do it. So what we've built is basically what coaches have been asking. Like the coach said earlier, teaching with the simulators or video or go army, we have the ability to add all of that with Team Nation. So what we're doing is we're taking your playbook and we're turning it into a game for the kids to learn. And then we're giving you all of the data around who knows it. So does your number two quarterback know it? And we rank them. We'll take your entire depth chart and we say, this player has a 72% understanding of green RT jab 36 power, right? Or if we take a look at, we take a look at Chad's binder here, the nickel pass game number 19 on the Zeb DBL wing right Y SH 72 Zeb shallow cross. Like when we talk about the level of complexity that the Eagles were running, it's probably pretty intense or probably egregious to even think that Thomason could even know any of the play calls, let alone any of the pass plays. You know, that's why I want kids learning football in more ways than one, especially Team Nation, because I want them to have confidence once they hit the field. I don't want them fearing their coach yelling at them or their buddies laughing at them. Yeah. I want them to walk out on a practice field with a little bit of swagger, knowing that, yeah, I got the plays. <laughs> and if they can be competing with their peers, their teammates, 
on this on their phones that's what they carry all the time and now you coaches can can be able to track if they know their stuff or not so going into games our coaches were hoping we knew their our stuff and if we didn't we were fired we we're cut we we're yeah, out of there yeah so it's a whole different thing to have a, a dashboard as a coach to quickly understand which players are studying which players get it which players need a little more time which players are going to need more on field coaching Man. um this is a tool that every coach in america could use and that's that's what we've tried to build and so as we've done this we've made sure to include all those levels of learning and the stats around the gamification is insane when we talk about you know 89.5 percent increase in student performance when you make it a challenge when you make it a game we talk about kids that are more motivated than traditional learning you can imagine how many of your players fall asleep in a hot, sweaty locker room as you're doing chalk talk or as you're watching film. I can't tell you how many times I fell asleep during film with it being so warm with me sitting next to our center who is, you know, <laughs> 350 plus, right? Well, a lot of times our coaches, um, it's easy if there's a mistake on the field to think we'll get that in the, you know, the, our, our next meeting. Mm -hmm. But then once you get in the meeting, what if your player that you want to teach that to is asleep or is not quite getting it or has entered and now can't can't even go in and fix it right as many of you showed it's it's a difficult challenge that we face so what we've built is the easy play drawing tool right there needs to be a base learning so what we do is we allow you to take from our nfl curated library any of our quizzes right so we have thousands of of plays we have you know 200 plus base sets you'll go into all of these look for those and make quick edits the nice thing is we've included all of the detailed notes because where the games are actually coming from is the individual player understandings what does the why do against this formation and the nice thing is it's easy click and drag if you need to change the blocking scheme or if they've got a very strong you know, captain that is a strong safety, you can show the ground that he's going to cover. That's cool. And it's something that you can teach the kids very simply. And these are coaching points put in by pro players and uh, very important steps, important angles. Um, this is what a cool library for coaches to be able to have as a resource to support what they're trying to get done. If they want a play, they can easily grab a play, incorporate it into their game plan. They have all the coaching points to teach it to their guys and then get out on the field and run it. Get out on the field and run it. And that's the thing is that now that we have the pro built library, it's really easy to adjust and play as well as take the base sets and start to put in all of your categories. Now, many of you have seen huddle and how it breaks it down. No better way than to have it on paper and then to actually start gamifying it right to start building it so as we have this library what we've done is now we've generated those multimodal learning sets right the nameless play the visual representation and the verbal saying it out loud and getting mental reps over and over again but also we put them in pressure situations where it's a countdown we put them in situations that we're trying to repeat with the crowd noise, right? With yeah, the, the count, the pressure is what they're used to on their phones. You know, that's the greatest part of this learning tool. You're not forcing a kid to learn from an abstract, weird way. You're saying, hey, take your phone that you're already on all day. Use this as a tool to get better at football. What? <laughs> and these are kids, are, they're so good at Snapchat. They know all the best TikTok versions and they definitely know Fortnite on their phone. It's one of those things that as we teach in multimodal ways, we have the ability to add like the coach was saying, the Go Army video. So what we've done is we've taken these and we've made sure to run it from the ability for you to see in visual, in auditory means, in math means. So these quizzes are, are pro-built. And the nice thing is you simply just add them from the library, you slide on what you need, and then you say exactly what players need to take these quizzes so that you can have the understanding. There's no point in giving the O-line the route tree, because if you need to have it just your skill players, you can do that. And then you can put in the words, the numbers, the visual representation, 
as well as the video that Go Army Edge or your own huddle clip. And then also you can add NFL content, NCAA, whatever you need in your own library to instruct and to show those tiny windows. And that's how our coaches would try and do it. They try and get as much film of you doing it correctly or another team doing it correctly and watch it and breaking it down to the smallest steps, moves. Hey Ryan, yeah. we got a really good question here in the chat. Yeah. Um, are there any pre-made quizzes for basic rules and or penalties of football? Absolutely. Let, let's go down to it. So the football basics, what you were talking about. So what you so. Do, yeah, you would slide on penalties and then you would go through what does unsportsmanlike conduct look like? Here is the correct term. No, no coach likes to see that. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no coach likes to see that. What's the call? What's the play? Delay of game. What does it look like? As well as basic terminology. I know you guys, during the off season, you have no idea how many freshmen are showing up or how many eighth graders are coming to, to mid lifting. So in terms of basic terminology, it's always nice to get a base understanding or a baseline, and then you add higher skill from there. So in terms of those, yeah, great question. We have all of these that you simply slide on or slide off. Now, one of these that is my favorite is something I always wanted to learn was pre-snap movement and post. Basically, the, the ability to see a defense shift into a cover two because I can tell you, when we were prepping for number three, Tahoma, we were the underdog by far in our playoff game. And I learned exactly what my position was going to do. I watched probably 10 hours of film on the guy I was going against. And then guess what? They didn't run any of those sets. I had no idea what I was doing. And they never ran the cover to Tampa that we had prepped for, for 10 plus hours. And I, I mean you can imagine we lost by a lot, right? And I'm sure you had some of those going into some games where everything you prep for, they didn't run. So we also want to put in different understandings of what we would call the variable situation. So there's their skeleton, which is running it against nothing. It's basically a controlled environment. Then there's a variable environment. What happens when the defense shifts into a 4-3? How do you respond? Where is your shifting? Where do you cover? So we have that in terms of shading. We have all of those. And then what about static? What happens when they're static in a 5-3 or, or they go into a bear, right? They pull another lineman. We also want the variable or the situational football. And this is where you guys can build your own or you can simply slide on our game engine to provide those questions and to provide those games. So one of the craziest things about Team Nation is we want to give you all of those three situations, the ones you can control, the ones you can control with variables, and then the ones that are random, like the girlfriend showing up to the game, the grandparents coming in to see you flying in, and now you've got thousands of fans screaming. So how long are these questions, how long are the quizzes on average? I coach high school players and the attention span is very short after a long day of school. Travis, you're exactly right. Not only is it not only is it very short, the average attention span is less than a goldfish. It's eight seconds. So on these quizzes, you can you can make them, you can edit them. We typically let them run for 30 seconds, no less. So it's short, quick instruction, because that way, if you're running 30 seconds or one minute, you have the ability to run through, you know, a thousand uh, in terms of you know, how you can get those mental reps. The faster you can ask, answer a question, the more you'll see it. It looks like we have some others, other questions on here. Um, in terms of one for you, Chad, it looks like, here we go, let's read this one. Um, being a walk-on, have there been any walk-on athletes who have positively surprised you at BYU and what did they do? Man, BYU's had a long tradition of good walk-on players. Dennis Pitta was another you know, walk on. He went and, and uh, played for the Baltimore Ravens as a tight end, dislocated his hip three times. Um, but he had a successful career, made plenty of money, was an incredible college player. Um, could have easily been the Mackey Award winner that year, but we were playing in a conference that we didn't get a lot of coverage at the time. <laughs> um, but through the years, I mean, walk on city, 
Yeah, that's a that's a great question. You know, we're we're open to any other questions. One of the things that we wanted to show you as well is the ability to teach these concepts with movements and feel that are all just inherently a part of the app. Now, the nice thing is we move forward on these is any multimedia can be added with any film and any picture and any auditory means. So you guys can show these and then you can talk over them just like your positional coaches would whisper in your ear and tell you exactly what to do and then pause the film. You coaches can do that inside of this. And as we go into these, the data, that's where I get really excited. These leaderboards, these dashboards, not only do they show you who's struggling, like Chad was saying, but what, who are your leaders, right? For run, for pass, for defense, for special teams, who's struggling, who hasn't logged in, who's maybe dealing with home challenges where they don't have the ability to learn in a safe situation. You'll also see what plays to run. That's one of the things that, that we love the most is if only 60% of your team knows a play, you got 40% percent your team row. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, okay. I, I have to ask you this. This is one of the questions that uh, they asked me before to ask you was how many times did you break the huddle with a player asking next to you? What's, what's my, role? it happens sometimes more in college than it did in the pros In the pros. You got to know your stuff. Um, there's, you just got to know your stuff. I was going to say one thing about this dashboard for you coaches is this is a very inexpensive tool to help your team learn football. And when we, you know, Steve Young, one of the things he likes most about Team Nation is it levels the playing field for everyone. So you can take this into a wealthy school, you can take it into a poor school, and you can allow your team, every member of the team, to jump ahead of the line when it comes to learning football, to preparing for the next level, to understanding what the coach, what you guys want out of them. Um, and he just said, this thing is remarkable. This is going to change the game. That We are going to level the playing field. We're going to allow people from every walk of life to learn the game of football the way that I know it. And that's true. I, lo I love that you say that. One of the things that I know a lot of you coaches don't have time to do is know exactly where to look or know who's next and ready. Because if you have a freshman that has an 89% score on a single play, you know he's probably ready. But if the two has a 40%, then you should probably play the freshman. We have a coach in Arizona who only lets kids suit up if they have a 60% understanding and better. Because there's, I mean, when it comes down to it, they're, they're trying to win. They're trying to create a culture of success. Football is a pressure sport. Oh yeah. You're going to be on the foot. You're going to be on the field under the lights. How do you get your kids ready for that pressure? That's one way to say, okay, this is what I expect of you. Jump on the app. I want you learning our plays and I want your recognition of the plays at least 60% or you're not getting on the bus. We, we, it, it reminds me of a story. I heard that Cooley from the, uh, uh, from the, the Redskins, he would actually leave his notes open on the table and forget them so that the coach would know he was paying attention <laughs> because he was, he was very smart. He knew his stuff and he knew he would get more playing time if the coaches realized that he knew it based on just what they were seeing because he was you know, behind the one at that time. And then he was able to play a lot more, you know, get a Pro Bowl selection. Yeah, he had a that. nice career. Nice great, career great after that. So that's, that's one of those things is this, pushes to the forefront the ability to scout and understand what players on your team know their stuff, but also how to take that individual time. One of the things that's really important to us is that leadership development and essentially turning captains out of everyone on the field. Because if you have a player that knows where every single person is supposed to be. That's a coach on the field. Now. You, you got a coach. You can essentially have 11 captains and you can have them gamify against each other and play against each other as they go through these specific installs, the specific situations or the specific plays, or they go back to those quizzes. We're also pushing out things like how to keep a job, how to tie a tie how to not get in trouble, how to take care of finances at 18. Because the reality of this with NIL, 
you guys probably all heard of Rattler who got two cars and ten thousand dollars before he even played now he's transferring to a different school we'll probably Carolina. ink another nil deal and they'll be more than happy so it's the ability to also change their life and change the the program and the sense of the field when you can take a baseline understanding run it for all of your your ends or run it for all of your down linemen and then know where to go from there. That's when you can truly take the coaching aspect and have small tweaks instead of just act like you're throwing down your clipboard, knowing that kids are yeah. dealing with all sorts of different challenges. Well, Team Nation wouldn't work if the if if the look of it was bad, if the speed of it was bad, the development of this website is, you know, this app is good enough that coaches can quickly get on there. They can download their playbook and the kids can get using it and playing it. And, and if it Ryan, work like that, then we're in trouble. Yeah, go ahead. And Ryan, I just want to say we're we're so impressed with this with Team Nation and the app you guys have. And I just think about back when I used to play high school. I don't know what my practices would look like because the whole practice was people going through plays to try and learn for the kids that weren't putting in that time and knowing the playbook. So I can't use it now because I'm a little old, but even just thinking how much time and and how different practices would have looked because we wouldn't have to spend 50% of the practice or more learning the playbook. So I just want to put that out there. So thank you. Well, yeah, that's, I appreciate foundational. That. that's how this whole thing came about was coaches frustrated that they're spending half their practice time teaching the plays. If your players can know the plays when they walk on the practice field and you can know they know the plays, think how much you can get done on the practice field, preparing for a game, and really teaching football. Yeah, and that's that's the insane science behind it is to actually get those reps, to actually get those one reps where they're going through, they're getting all of those functions. It's always easy. Now, another question uh, from Ashton Elder right now, what's the pricing on the app? So right now what we're doing is we have a big push before the Glacier Conference. So we have a 30% off discount. Happy to take anyone through it. So typical prices for up to uh, 50 or 60 players, usually it would be $1,000, but we do 30% off that. We also have a gold package for your larger teams where it's essentially up to 400 players or unlimited amount on that side. So most high school teams typically fit between that average. For all you youth coaches that are on with us as well, typically it's around 20 players at a 395 cost, but we would take the 30% the off on there. Then Sean, would you go ahead and run the, the last question? Yeah, absolutely. And don't worry if you had to pause or if you had students walk in and bother you while you were, <laughs> while you were uh, going over this, we're recording it all, we'll send it out to you and we'll be able to go over this. So as we run this poll question, one of the last things that I want to let you guys know is Kind of, you've heard the old adage of the 10,000 reps makes a master, but then think of how many real perfect reps you can run with 11 different bodies who have all sorts of challenges at home, at school, with girlfriends, with family. The, the amount of perfect reps you can run. I remember my coach yelling at us saying we couldn't even get one done. So the purpose of this app is to make sure that before you ever arrive at practice, you know 100% of your stuff and knowing kids these days and knowing how much they're on their phone, if they could do the one thing that will earn them NIL money, scholarships, chances to play with D1 schools like BYU or even you know others where they have that chance, it's just a world of difference. And I know why all of you coaches coach, it's always fun to hear that you guys spend so many hours help prepping them this is a tool that can definitely help you there. Yeah, I love you coaches. I'm so grateful for the coaches that changed my life for no money. They, they just took the time. They taught me the game. They gave me a life uh, with my friends at school. Um, the whole platform of football taught me everything about hard work, discipline, not being disappointed because I was disciplined. Um, it really gave me a springboard for my whole life. And it was because my coaches loved me enough to teach me the game. So I want to just thank all you guys for teaching the game of football. Um, I know there's a lot of pressure from people out there to, to run away from the game because of injuries or whatever. And 
I just think that could not be further from the truth right now for our kids in this country. They need this game and more than the game, they need you. So the fact that you're giving your time and your talents, your love to teach these guys football, thank you so much. Appreciate that, Chad. We'll, we'll kind of end on that as we summate kind of everything that we've gone over. Please ask any other questions you have for, for Chad. I know some of you are burning to ask him or dig the Eagles or the Rams. I know that in there, but we really appreciate you guys and what you're doing. Feel free to contact any one of us. We'll make sure to put our contact information in and make sure everyone can see that. And then to send to everyone, I'll put in my phone number. One of the things that Team Nation always promises is that we're available. We want to make sure that when it comes to teaching and when it comes to kids, we will be there and we will make sure that we have someone answer the phone, answer you quickly, answer an email. And that's one of the things that I think is, is really important. Now, for those of you that aren't able to speak to us before Glazier, don't worry, we'll be there. I know Sean's team has is, is prepped everything to make sure that we have moments to speak to you all. Sean, great job. Thank you. Thank you. I had one quick question. I, I've been able to hear some of the feedback you guys have gotten from some coaches um, but what's some firsthand feedback you guys have gotten on how much this has changed their program? Man, it, it's it's an interesting, interesting question. We have a lot of those quotes that we put up on our website. You know, Dan Dabrowski talked about it. He's over in uh, Lake Orion up, up north. We also have some others down in Arizona. I mean, you know, you know, all the guys down in Arizona. One of the things that that they mentioned is that they've been able to not take the play teaching away from from the coaches, they've been able to gift that to the players and now they're motivating each other. Now it's a, hey, I see that you're at 70%. Well, I just passed you, I'm at 72%, right? And nothing is better than friendly competition between teammates, something you guys already did in the hotel, you already did on Saturday nights, yeah. but now it's in a way that they can all see rank and file. It's good pressure, it's healthy pressure and football is full of healthy pressure. <laughs> And the more you can attack that good, healthy pressure, the less you have to worry about the bad pressure where you're walking in the line of scrimmage and you don't know what the crap to do. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Now we'll go ahead and pause. Any other questions you guys have, please send them to us. And Ryan, just so you know, if, uh, if they go to teamnationsports.com until December 31st, if they use the code HOT30, that's how they can activate that 30% off. Awesome. So the code then is the HOT30. Now, obviously, you don't have to speak to us. You don't need to, but feel free to book our time, text us, call us. We have all of our information available. And then, obviously, anyone else that have any questions for Chad, now's the time. Okay, I appreciate it. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap up then. Sean, we'll, we'll have you end it for us. Yeah, coaches, thank you so much for just coming on. And thank you both, uh, Chad and Ryan, for your expertise in, in going over just how kids learn and how this is such a game changer in the playbook um, and in a whole and how it can change programs. So thank you guys so much. And coaches, continue to check back in for our other Drive Live events. Uh, thank you for your time. And we can't wait to be with you guys next time. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, guys.